Is Facebook even relevant anymore? Why are we even talking about Facebook when it seems like it's on its way out in comparison to other platforms like TikTok, which are growing? Yes, while Facebook seems fairly stagnant in its growth lately, Facebook groups remain an extremely effective tool for outreach and connection. Why is that exactly? Let's talk about it. At this stage in its development, Facebook is giving noticeably higher preference to advertisers and people spending money on its platform in exchange for reach. That means your Facebook page probably isn't going to get the organic reach, unpaid reach, that it used to. No, it is not just you. It is the algorithm prioritizing those who pay it money. Imagine that. But thankfully, Facebook still has an obligation to connect people. Facebook has always been about community, and it cannot lose that, even though it definitely wants to give more preference to those who give it money. One way we see this focus on community lived out is through Facebook groups. See, the algorithm will treat Facebook groups more like a friend or a family member. Facebook groups are going to get more preference in your newsfeed than just the typical post from a Facebook page trying to share something with you. You are going to see group notifications on your newsfeed much more than you are going to see actual Facebook posts from pages. You will also likely be specifically notified about Facebook group posts in your notifications. That means you're getting an alert every time something happens in a Facebook group. Okay, maybe you won't be notified for every single post in every single group, but it's a lot more than the pages that are trying to reach you and just posting on their pages with no paid advertising. This is incredibly worth paying attention to if you have a message you're trying to share via Facebook. You may not get as much organic reach through your page posts, but you can still be active in groups and get so much more reach all for free. So how do you create a Facebook group? Let's take a look. First step in creating a Facebook group, when you just click this F here on the top left, this is how the Facebook uh, home screen looks in 2022. You should pop up everything over here on the left. All of your options for messenger notification search groups is what we want to click on. So click there. Click on groups. You're going to see a summary of the groups you are a part of as well as uh, posts that will pop up here from those groups. But what you want to click on is create new group. Perfect. So here you have some options as far as how you want your group to look what you want it to be called. You see there's one member in the group, that's you. So you're starting fresh here. I'm gonna go over some of these options as you're creating a group. So awesome group for awesome people. I don't know what to call my group. Choose privacy. This is something I wanna talk about because you can have a public group that anybody can see who is in this group and what they post. So you, you really don't have a lot of privacy there. It still does have the advantages of Facebook's gonna prioritize communicating what goes on in this group to people in the group. Those people will get notified more than they would from your page. So there is still a lot of benefit if you are okay with everything that happens in the group being seen by anybody. And that should probably be communicated to those in the group because sometimes people think if they're in a group, it's private, not always the case. Now, private, only members can see who is in the group and what they post. So there is a sense of privacy there, but please note, and please have everyone else in your group note that just because a group is private on Facebook doesn't mean any or all of the information cannot be shared far and wide, right? People can screenshot things and send them. Who knows who's in the group if you have a big enough group. So it's not really that private. It just feels a little more intimate sometimes. So uh, here's another option you have visible or hidden. So you can have a private group that only the people that are approved to be in the group. We'll, we'll get to that approval in a second can see what is in the group, can see who is in the group. So there is a sense of privacy, uh, but once you're in the group, you can see it all. Or you can make it a hidden group. So pros and cons here. If it is a visible group, you can advertise this. Let's say you have a church page and you want to advertise a church group. You can say, hey, join our group. Here it is. You can't see what's in it till we approve that you're in here. You know, we're not going to accept any bots, any spam people, people you don't know. Uh, but we will approve you if we've seen you before, if we someone knows your name. Hidden group. Nobody can access this group unless you tell them about this group. So I can't just search your church. I can't just search awesome group for awesome people and have this come up. It's not going to come up at all unless someone gives me the link or uh, invites me directly. So here, once you've decided what you're going to do, you can actually start inviting some people. So you just click on those names and it can, Facebook will invite them f to your group for you. So once you've got some of these privacy settings decided, you hit create, you've created awesome group for awesome people. You've created your church group. Great. You're the only person in there. Uh, so you can set some things up while you wait to get people in there. So after you invite 
members or maybe you don't wait for that you add a cover photo you do want to add a description to your group and this is a great space to say who is this group for and who is it not for so maybe you're making a very specific group for we'll go with the church that is making a community group so is it just for members is it for anyone who's visited? Is it for friends of that specific faith community? Or is this just a group for dog walkers in X community? So wherever you live, we're saying people who go on walks with their dogs, because I'm team dog here, Michelle, sorry. Uh, this is a group for those people. Awesome group for awesome people, great. Who does, who is that? So this is where you can add some of that. You can add some details. You can add information about how the group can be used. Like we encourage you to post XYZ, what do you want people to post? So one additional thing that you should look at when you're setting up your group over here on the left, and you might have to click the arrow to expand it a bit. You have some more tools that you can look at. Uh, you'll have pending posts. If you're requiring people get their posts approved, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Member requests, uh, member questions is what I want to click on because you can actually add questions. Why are you awesome? like because I'm an awesome group for awesome people um, or what kind of, wow, what kind of dog do you have? Okay, so we're doing the dog walkers in the community group and you can make it a written answer, multiple choice or check boxes. So the idea is that kind of helps get rid of some spam, people that aren't really people on Facebook or people that just wanna mess with you. Uh, if it is a church group, you can say, how did you hear about our community? Um, you can put, put multiple questions. Um, don't make it too cumbersome for people, but you know, a couple of questions isn't gonna be that bad. And then when people wanna join your group, they'll have to answer these questions and you can see their answers and approve or not approve their ability to be in your group. And then the last thing I want to talk about within creating your group here is this group settings. So you click on group settings over here on the left while you're in your group. We've already done name, description, privacy, hidden group. Uh, we can edit who can invite with a link, admins and moderators, anybody with the group. That's because I have it marked as hidden. So it's, it's really trying to make this group private. You can add a location if you would like to. You don't have to. You can change the uh, web address. You can make it very specific so that you can put it in your communications. It's easier for people to find them just by typing in the URL. You can add a nice color. You can decide what kind of badges Facebook's gonna give to people. You might not care about that, but it's just kind of a fun way to uh, be involved in groups and get little badges for your participation. You can add a group affiliation if you would like. You can connect that to a person uh, I believe you can connect that to a page so that pages can join the group as well or just profiles. That means like if someone owns a business, their business could have, you know, a, part a participation in your group. You might not want that. You might want it to be people only. You can decide who, if there are people pr approving member requests, who can do that. You can pre-approve some people to join. You can decide who can post in this group. Ideally, it's everyone, but if you have different purpose for the group, that's okay. You can decide whether you're approving all member requests. And apparently, I didn't know this, but you can have anonymous posting as well. That's, that's new to me. If you are making your group more public and you're okay with people at least knowing it exists, even if they can't get it, so if it's public or private, not necessarily hidden, you may wanna link your uh, page, your church page, so that when people come across your church page, they see that it's connected to this group. That can be a really nice way for people to find your group. You know, they find your Facebook page, they look you up, and then they see, oh, cool, they've got stuff going on in a Facebook group. I wanna be part of that. Okay, now that you know how to create a Facebook group, how do you grow it? As with any platform, you grow your community by telling people about it. Add a link to your Facebook group in and on your Facebook page, any email communications you send out, your Zoom meetings, your website. Then once you've told people about it, incentivize joining your Facebook group. You gotta make people want to be in there with you. One way to do this is by actually creating like a five day or three day or one week challenge or training or some kind of special offering that's only gonna happen in the Facebook group. And then everyone's gonna connect on this special offering every single day. Maybe it's like a thread where people can to discuss certain things where you're teaching on certain things and I 
ideally the bond created over this three or five or seven day event where people are communicating on this topic is the type of thing that advertises itself because the people participating are so intrigued and involved and enjoying it that they tell other people, hey, you gotta jump in here, you gotta get on this, it's going on for just a couple days, you don't wanna miss it. And then next time you do one of these, those people will encourage others to join the group to be part of it. Speaking of inviting your friends into the Facebook group, encourage the members of your group to invite others in because their specific one-on-one -on -one invitation to someone that they know and who knows them very well is gonna mean so much more than your invitation as a leader or just as a stranger or someone they've kind of seen online but don't really know that well. So really encourage your members to invite others in. Now that you're getting people in your Facebook group, you wanna keep it active. Make this group a space that people want to be involved in, want to share in, and come back to repeatedly. Consider creating regular threads where people can respond to a question or share their experience, even in a photo. Ask them what they've learned lately. Ask them to share a photo of their weekend. Share a thought and encourage them to respond with their comments or their own disagreeing thoughts. Encourage them to participate in your live video trainings and your surveys as you get to know them more and try to share more education tailored exactly to what they want to know. And don't forget to encourage these people to make their own posts. It might be helpful even to tap a few people who you know are kind of more active in the group and say, hey, can you make a post this week? Can you make a post this week? This will kind of get that ball rolling and show people it's okay to do that and how to do that. You don't have to do this part alone, but you should have some kind of plan to monitor this group. Some Facebook groups are actually set up in a way that the general membership cannot post without their specific post being approved by an admin or a leader in that group. Now you could do this if you really want to make sure that nobody posts anything that you don't like, but it might discourage people posting because they don't feel as free to just say what they want. They, they know that it's gonna be scrutinized a little bit. So th that's really your call. You could also tap these same few members that are in the group fairly often or on Facebook fairly often and ask them just to keep an eye on what goes on in the group and, and notify you or delete anything that's inappropriate or that's kind of questionable. While Facebook pages may not see nearly the action that they used to, Facebook groups are still an extremely effective way to connect with your community. We at Digi highly recommend that you make use of Facebook groups. Not only are they an effective tool for community engagement, but a lot of your people are probably already on Facebook to begin with, and best of all, they're free. What other questions do you have about Facebook, Facebook groups, or social media in general? We at Digi are here to help progressive leaders of spiritual communities share hope, healing, and light online. Comment below if you want to see us dive into a specific topic on how you can do that better. For now, we brought the knowledge, now it's your turn to put it into action. Peace be with you as you do.